watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Praise ye the Lord. Let us just worship the Lord for a second or two. We have seen the Lord goodness. His mercy is on compassion. And we have seen the Lord goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have seen the Lord goodness. His mercy is on compassion. And we have seen the Lord goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. O oh Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to us. O oh Lord, you are excellent in our lives every day. O oh Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to us. O oh Lord, you are excellent in our lives. Our excellent Father, our good God, our merciful God, we thank you. We thank you for who you are and we thank you for the grace you have given each and every one of us today even to see a new day. Blessed be your name. And Lord, even as we share your word and call on you, please let the heavens be opened over our lives. Let, let it be so easy and smooth. Speak to us yourself and give us the grace to not only to hear but also to do that your name alone be glorified and we shall be blessed in return. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let somebody shout a big Amen. Again, I want to welcome everyone to this wonderful uh, uh, meeting, as it were. Even as you do so today, God himself will connect with you much more than you can even imagine in the name of Jesus. Today we're looking at Psalm 127 verse 1. Psalm 127 verse 1. And it says, Except the Lord build the house. The labor in vain that build it, except the Lord keep the city. The watchman wicked but in vain. Let me read it one more time. Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it, except the Lord keep the city. The watchman wicked but in vain. So we're looking today at you don't have to labor. You don't have to labor. The verse is saying to you, God does not want you nor me to labor. Rather, he wants us to flow into his favor. And that you will begin to experience even from this moment forward in the name of Jesus. You will enter into the favor of God. God has you in mind. I'm sure you know. And he's saying to you, there's no need for you to labor. To labor, to labor. Diligence is not laboring. Laboring is struggling. Diligent is doing the right thing smartly at all times. Praise either Lord. So when he says labor, he's not saying you should be lazy. He's simply saying you don't have to struggle in that which you do. And the only thing that will make that happen for you is to allow him to have his way in your life. He's saying to you, in this Psalm 127 verse 1, I want to be your partner. I want to partner with you. I want to be your ally. I want to be your friend. You don't have to do it alone. And you know what the Bible says? Even if you want to do it alone, it will end in Failure and you will not fail in Jesus' mighty name. I thought you would say loud amen. I said you are not going to fail because it is wisdom for you to look for an ally who has it all rather than you reinventing the wheel. It is simply wisdom. Jesus says, I have it all. 
let me be your ally, let me be your partner, then you begin to have favor and success unlimitedly. I'm sure you will like that. Praise the Lord. So God is saying here, let me build with you. Let me help you. Let me support you. Let me handle it for you. You just walk into it and you begin to enjoy favor. What a good God you and I have. I'm so glad I belong to him. And I'm sure you also will be glad if you belong to him. The Bible reminds me in Proverbs chapter 21 verse 31. Proverbs 21 verse 31. He said, even though the earth is prepared for the day of battle, safety is only of the Lord. Horses will fail. Horses can fail. But when the Lord is in it with you, you can be sure you, you will not only be safe, you will win the battle. The us may be prepared against the day of battle, but if God is not there with you and with you and with you, even the us will disappoint you. I pray even for you, as I've prayed for myself, that you will allow God to have even a space in your life. To have room in your life. Because if you do so, everything will just fall in line for you. Of course, you will still have to do your part. When we hear we read, the earth is prepared. So you must prepare, you must be ready. However, in your preparation, in your readiness, you must also put in place the God equation. That without God, every preparation, every readiness will amount to vanity. And you will not fail. I said you will not fail. You will not be unfruitful. Everything that has happened as it were, like fruitless efforts in your life, will end today in the name of Jesus. Jesus wants to end your futile efforts. Your fruitlessness. What will hand on fruitfulness in your life? No more fruitless efforts in your life. Say with me. No more fruitless efforts in my life, in my endeavor, in my home, in all that I do. Say it again. Say no more fruitless efforts in my life. And it shall be so for you, even as you say that loud and clear in the name of Jesus. Accept the Lord builds. It will just be struggle from one struggle to another struggle. Struggle, struggle, struggle. That will end in your life in Jesus' name. I said it will end in your life in Jesus' name. The Bible tells me in Romans chapter 9, verse 15 and verse 16. I'm sure you also have heard that before. Romans 9, 15 and 16. So it is not of him that will it. Not of him that run it. It's simply of God that shows mercy. Therefore, it says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. You are hearing what God is saying. Don't struggle. Don't do it alone. Let me be a partner with you. If you only can allow him, the mercy and compassion will be your, your, your experience. Because you can, you may want to, you may, you may think you have the strength, you, the will, it's okay to do, but then if you don't put Jesus in place, it will be a waste of time. Not of him that will it, not of him that run it, it's simply of God that makes a way. He will make a way for you today in the name of Jesus. Look at what Jesus said, even in John 15 verse 5. John 15 verse 5. Jesus says, except you abide with me, and I abide with you, said, all that a man will be doing will be called nothing. Zero. Zero. So you can do nothing except by me. I pray from today you will be wise, and you will align yourself with the will of God for your life. The will of God for you, for me, that will allow him to take control of our lives. That is his will. Deeply said in Matthew chapter 11, I believe verse 28 and verse 29. Matthew 11, from verse 28 to 29, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. Matthew 28, verses, sorry, Matthew 11, verses 28 and 29. 
Matthew 11, 28 and 29. It says, Come ye, all ye that labor, and I will exchange your labor with favor. Look at it this way. Labor starts with hell. L-A-B-O-R, if you spell it American way. Amen. Mm -hmm. But favor starts with F. The same F-A-V-O-R. So what change? What changes between the first one, labor, and favor? You just replace the first letter and you, you, are, you are there. So replace labor, L, L with favor, F. I begin to swim in the favor, in the glory, in the mercy of God. I pray today you will allow him to have his way in your life. You will not be hard-hearted, strong-headed, and say, no, I don't want him to take charge. If he doesn't take charge, it will be a waste of life. And you know what? He says, you don't have to waste your life because you are stubborn. Let him build your house with him. Let him build your life with you. Let him take charge. Make him your ally. Make him your partner. Make him your friend. And everything will simply flow to your side. But the Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 7. James 4, verse 7. If a man does not submit to God, he will submit to the devil. And God does not want you to do so. It says, submit yourself. Forget the poor as now. Make it personal. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Surrender yourself to God. Give him room in your life. Don't give the enemy room. Don't give the enemy an inch. Don't give the enemy a space. Give God the fullness of your life. Submit to him. Then you don't have to submit to the devil. If I, the devil will see you and run. Because when you submit to God, then, as we are reminded in Colossians 3, I believe verse 3, Colossians 3, verse 3, says you are hid in Christ, and Christ is hid in God. So, if you submit to God, then you are hidden, as it were, enclosed inside. Christ is enclosed around you, and God is enclosed around you and Christ. So, anyone that wants to attack you will first attack God, then attack Christ before he comes to you. No one that the Bible says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous that is wise will run into it and shall be saved. I pray today you will be wise to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. You, don't, you can't afford to be on your own. You must submit to him who knows the way. In fact, the Bible calls him the way. He knows the way. He knows it all. Before you were born, before I was born, he knew what the way will look like. Saying to you, submit yourself to me. Submit your life to me. Let me take hold of your life. Then fruitlessness, laboring, struggle will end. I'm too glad that somebody who's thinking ahead of you, who wants your life to be smooth, easy, and successful, if I were you, I would simply run to him. Praise ye the Lord. Let him be the builder of your life, of your home, of your marriage, of your business, of your career. Let him be the, what I will call the commander-in-chief. The one who is able to plan, arrange, and deliver results, good results for you in all that you hand over to him. He has never failed. He will not start with you. Amen. He will not start with me. I got also reminded in Isaiah 26 verse 3 and verse 4. Isaiah 26 verse 3 and 4. What he says in Psalm 1, 2, 7 says, Let me be with you. Saying, friendly in Isaiah 26, 3 and 4, he says, Trust, 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 trust him. When you trust him, of course, peace will be the outcome. Peace will be the result. Peace, 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 peace. You know what? Peace, hmm. Peace means that even when there are storms, you will overcome the storms that will come. I would say, when your heart is stayed on him, when you trust him, he will keep you, not just in ordinary peace, in 
perfect peace. Perfect peace. Peace that cannot be rumbled. Peace that is so clear that even the enemy will know that you are untouchable. Perfect, perfect, perfect peace. Then verse 4 says, uh, verse 26, verse, 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 verse 4. He says that when you put your life in him, as that, as that 26 verse 4, when you put your life in his hand, you will have perfect peace, then he says in verse 4, let's see verse 4, as that 26 verse 4, amen, somebody, as that 26 verse 4, just, okay, oh, hallelujah, open that with me, as that 26 verse 4, is there, is there, open, 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 open. Okay, let me just quickly rush to the, to the scripture that I don't have to quote it on my head. I would like to read it yourself. Okay, so trust ye in the Lord, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. When you allow him to build, they don't have to build with your own strength. The Bible says, no man can prevail even in his own strength. Mm -mm. You cannot prevail with your strength, but you can prevail and you will prevail when you hand over, submit, and let Jesus have his way. Then you will have perfect peace, then you will have the strength of God to do that which you want to do. I pray for you today, you will not fail anymore. I said you will not fail anymore. I thought you, I will hear you say it loud, Amen. Hallelujah. Then John 16. Yo, God is looking out for you. He's looking out for you. Say, He's looking out for me. He's speaking to me. Say, He's speaking to me. Say, This is a voice spoken unto you. Did you see that? Say, I'm speaking to you. Say, Thank you, God, for speaking to me. I'm, say, I've spoken this unto you. What, what, what has he spoken? That in me you might have peace. Remember what Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, when you surrender to him, when you allow him to build, they say you will have perfect peace. He only gives perfect peace. Peace that no man, no one can rubbish. Even the storms of this world cannot shake the peace of God in your life. He says, I've spoken to you. And what have you heard him speak to you? He says, in me you will have peace. In me you will have peace. Say with me. In him I will have peace. Say it one more time. In him I will have peace. You know why? Because the Bible calls him the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace is the source of perfect peace. Is the advocate of wonderful peace. Is the one that can give you peace that will eliminate confusion from your life. It says, in me, in me, in me. This is Jesus speaking. In me, not in the world, not in the man, not in any man, not in the devil, not in the club that you go, not in your Association not in your uh, tribal group that you, you that you belong to. In Him alone, you will happy. Then He says to you in that John sixteen thirty three, He says, "Not as the world give." He says, "You will have peace." He says, "All that the world will give you is called tribulation." But He says, "If you can just allow me to take over." To build with you, as he tells us in Psalm 1, 2, 7, verse 1, says you will be an overcomer. I'm sure you want to be an overcomer. And you will be one, even in the name of Jesus, overcoming every challenge, every battle, every trouble, every trials, every tribulations that the enemy may bring your way. But you must be wise to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. You must open your ear wide to hear. Not just to hear, you have to internalize what you are hearing. You have to as if eat it. Like you will eat bread. Jesus says, no man can live by bread alone. You can't eat with, by bread alone. You, have to, you can live only with the word of life. The word of God. So you must put that word in your heart. And let it not depart out of your heart. You must always remember the word of God. 
hand over your life to me, Jesus is saying. Except I build with you, it will be a waste of time. He doesn't want you to waste your time because a wasted time is a wasted life. I pray that you will begin to submit yourself to him. So that the peace that he promised will be your experience. Look at what he says again in John 14 verse 27. John 14, 27 says, I leave my peace for you. Not as the world liveth, but my peace I give to you. My peace, my peace, my peace, my peace. Just saying, I have peace that the world cannot give. I give you my peace. I leave my peace with you. Not as the world will give. He says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled, not, let not your heart be fearful. Let not your heart be troubled, don't allow anything to make you afraid. The, oh, the, 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 the see, you, somebody, somebody, something I'm telling you, don't mind what he's saying, he's just saying his own. No, I'm not saying, my, I'm saying what God wants you to hear from his word. So if I were you, I would simply put aside whatever belief had I've had before this day. God is the only way to true peace, to success, to great, great accomplishment in life with that sweat. I can tell you that from experience. <laughs> Amen. You give him your life, he will give you himself. And what a great thing to do. When you have the giver of all gifts, then gifts will come to you. No wonder the Bible tells you and I. In Matthew chapter 6, read from verse 25 to verse 34. Just read on your own. I will let you know what verse 33 says. 33 says, Seek ye first the giver of life. Seek ye first God. Seek ye first all that he stands for, then everything else will be handed over to you. It is foolishness for any man to run after the gift and, and, and ignore the giver of the gift. The giver of the gift can take away the gift. But I pray today God will not take away his blessings from your life. But you must be wise. Hear what he is telling you. Let your heart be open. Receive the counsel of God and he will be there for you. He will be there with you. He will be there with you. You are not going to walk this life again alone. He wants to partner with you. He wants to help you. He wants to bless you. He wants you to be a success story. But you must start from somewhere. Hand over your life to him. Let him be the controller. Don't act not like the fact that he is the one that knows, knows it all. If you are already in Christ, I say congratulations. But you must also make your mind up that you will not walk out of him. How does a man who is in Christ, how can he walk out of Christ? When you begin to choose what you want to hear and what you don't want to hear, you, you pick and choose from his word. This is for the pastor. This is for me. I'm not a pastor. No. If you are in Christ, you must be fully committed to all that he has to say. Look at what the Bible says in Malachi. In Malachi chapter, chapter 2, I believe. No, chapter 3, verse 10. Malachi 3, verse 10. It says something that sometimes when I read, when I read that, I, 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 I ask God to help me. And God will help you too in Jesus' name. Malachi 3 verse 10. What it says? It says, no, 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 no. So Malachi 2 verse 10. Malachi 2 verse 10. It says in verse 10. Oh, sorry, I missed that. James 3 verse 10. James, James chapter. James, it's in James. Because you must you must see it yourself. James chapter. Let me open to James now. James chapter chapter 3. Chapter 3 of James, verse 10. Open it with me, please, wherever you are. James 3, verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the law, the old law, and yet offend in one point, is guilty of all. Did you read that? James 3, 
James 2 verse 10, sorry, James 2 verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the old law, you are born again, you are a child of God. I'm so glad for you. But you must keep the old law. You cannot pick and choose and say, this is for me. Uh, the old law means everything in the Bible. You must keep to all that God has writ written. You cannot choose, well, I'm not, I'm paying tithe, I'm not paying tithe, that is, uh, that, no, 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 that is the devil deceiving you. If you miss one out of hundred, you miss all. That's what verse, verse 2 is saying, verse, James 2, 10 is saying. But I pray that you will not miss it. I said you will not miss it. I said you will not miss it, say amen. Because the devil wants you to pick and choose. Don't mind them. They are too hard. They are too strict. No, 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 no. God is a good God. But he's a God of principle and standard. He will not bend his word for anybody. You know what? Even for his son, he didn't bend his word. So, if he didn't bend for Jesus, then why was he bending for me? Have you, have you considered that before? Jesus said to him, Lord, take this cup away from me. It is too hard to drink. God ignored him. He then said, well, if it is your will, let it be done. The will of God for you, for me, that we must, in, in all that we do, work with his word. There is no other way. If you must succeed, and you will succeed in Jesus' name. So, if I want again, make sure that you work it out day by day. Day by day. <laughs> Jesus said to us, Thank you, Lord. In, 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 in Luke chapter 9, don't open, don't worry. I'll just put it. Luke 9. Verse 23 says, carry your cross daily. You must follow the word of God day by day. And it's very simple. It's very simple. Just wake up in the morning and say, Lord, today, let me walk in your will. Simple. It's not a big deal. Yes, yeah, so make up your mind that each day, each day that you live, you live for God. It's as simple as that. Amen. So if you are not born again, then you must start from becoming a child of God. There's no other way. Any other way is, deceit, is, is, is deception. The devil will not succeed anymore to deceive you in Jesus' name. So just run to him. Let him become your, your Lord. And he will clean you up and strengthen you and help you even to the end. Because of time, let's just, let just run it up because time is far gone. So, my father, thank you for your word. And give me the grace not only to Put this in my heart, but to also observe to do. I've had so much today that you want me to submit to you in everything, Lord. The grace to do this, Lord, give it to me. I don't want to struggle anymore in life. Help me, Lord, to simply fall in line with your word that everything else will fall in line with me. Lord, help me. Tell him to help you and he will help you. He is ready and willing and able to help you. Because it is his joy to see you succeed in life. Lord, please help every one of us, oh Lord. Even as we have looked into your world very briefly this morning. Lord, help us to surrender all. Submit all. Give you space in our lives that we will then become overcomers and, and, and succeed in all that we do. In the name of Jesus. Say so thank you, my father. Thank you, our Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Remember, Jesus loves you. God loves you. And the heaven will want you to succeed. And you will succeed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We are so grateful you could join us today. Please walk with the word you've had. And you will remain an overcomer. Enjoy the rest of your day and God bless you. Say amen and amen and amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you and God bless you. You are now watching Amazing Fire TV.